Say you want to go beyond a screenshot. You want to render a video out from Unreal Engine and then take this video into Final Cut, Premiere Pro or DaVinci and then add some sound design and some music to it. You can do this using a sequence. To create a sequence, we're going to click on this clapper here and then click on Add Level Sequence. This is then going to ask you for a folder to save your sequence in. I recommend creating a folder called Sequences and then add it inside here. So in our case, My Sequence. When you click Save, Unreal is going to open a timeline inside your user interface. Here you'll see you have all your frames with half second and full second counts here. And you have a range of options up here. You also have the ability to set the frame rate of the sequence along with accessing the animation curves over here. The first thing you want to do with the sequence is create a camera. You can do this by clicking on this camera icon over here, which is going to create a new cine camera. Now that we've created a cine camera, you'll notice that we're also piloting it, which means now when we move around the scene, we're actually piloting that cine camera. So if I click this eject icon here, you will see there is a camera where I was. Now, if you want to pilot this camera or place it, you can do it in one of two ways. Either you can move, scale and rotate just the way we've been doing it. Maybe not scale your camera, but move and rotate like we've been doing it here. Or you can click on perspective and then cine camera actor. This will let you pilot that camera like this. The cine camera is one of two cameras in Unreal Engine. So you have the normal camera and the cine camera. The cine camera aims to replicate film cameras in our world. So you have a range of interesting settings here, such as lens settings. I can choose 12 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. And you can see this changes the image drastically. So using a 50 mm here, I can click on say the focus settings and choose the distance at which this camera is focusing. So as I reduce this number, things closer to me become more focused. So we're just going to reduce it. And you can see that red cup is becoming really sharp and everything behind it becomes blurred. You can also draw the debug focus plane. So you can ensure that say if I wanted to ensure that this can was in focus, when I uncheck this, the can is sharp, things near to me are blurred and things further away have also started blurring. Now the way sequencer works is everything has a track and that track has values that can be keyed. Keyed means that I want the value to be this, whatever the key is, at this frame. So you can see here under the cine camera actor, we have camera component and that camera component has aperture, focal length and that thing that we've just been working on, the manual focus distance. You can see it over here, the value is 243.62 and over here it's the same. So let's say I want that at frame zero, this is my focus setup here. So I'm just going to key it. Then at frame 60, I want to reduce the focus distance to this red cup over here. So I can reduce it. So the red cup is now in focus. And then you can see a key has been added there automatically. So now when I move my playback head between these two, the focus is changing. So you can see it's automatically um, dialed in those values between these two key keyframes because it knows that at frame zero, I have to be 243 and at frame 60, I have to be 94. So the next thing we're going to do is get our camera in position for animation. Where is it going to be at frame 001? So I'm just moving my camera over to the bed here because I quite like this frame, but the issue is because our lens is so long, we don't see much of the frame in here. So I'm gonna change this over to a 30 millimeter and this looks slightly better. 12 millimeter would look too much like a wide angle and I don't really want that. So I'm just going to go with 30 millimeter over here. All right, so let's get our camera in position just over the bed like this, maybe as far back as we can go. And then you want to add a key to the transform track of our cine camera actor. So we're just going to key the transform track there and then move this over to frame 90. So three seconds because 30 frames per second. And then we're just going to slowly move our camera. Now you may feel that the camera is moving too fast. You can change the camera speed up here. So in my case, while I'm moving, I'm just mouse wheel down scrolling. So it's slowing down the camera a little bit. And then we can have the camera kind of just turn here like this. Okay, so now when you key it, you'll see that your camera starts off in the center. And then as it moves forward, it kind of turns over to that cooking bench over there. And that's how you can animate in Unreal Engine. Now, you may want to go with a slightly different animation. You may just want to move your camera forward. You can do all of this without being in the camera. Remember that you can exit the camera. You can go back to your first keyframe over here. And you can just delete this. And then you can say that, for example, at frame 90, I would like my camera to move slightly forward like this and then just keyframe it again like that. So you've got a much more subtle, slower camera move here.
Whenever you click on a camera, Unreal gives you this picture and picture preview of what the camera sees. But if you, you know, deselect the camera, that goes away. So if you want that to constantly be there, you can also pin this. That way, if you make any changes to your scene, your camera view is always visible in the user interface. Like you can make some changes to the chair here. You can put something on the table that's meant to, you know, tell a story of this scene. You can do it that way as well. So you can animate these cameras by either piloting them or you can animate them just by exiting and then pinning it here and then setting the keyframes after you've moved them. Now, it's very important to remember the sequence at which you add keyframes. So first, what you want to do is set your playback head and then key. Then move your playback head to the next location you want to key and then move your objects and then finally key. What happens is, is that if you've, you know, you want to add a keyframe here and then let's say you move this around, the second you move the playback head, it's going to default to its previous keyframe. So just keep that in mind. You first want to move your playback head and then key and not do it the other way around. Now we're ready to go. We've pretty much set up our animation here. We're now ready to render this out from Unreal. To do this, you want to click on this clapper icon over here, which will bring up the render movie settings. You can choose a format that you want to render this to. So in my case, I'm using AVI because I'm not going to be stitching this uh, in Premiere or Final Cut. But if you know how to use those tools, you can export an EXR, JPEG or a PNG, which is going to be an image sequence, meaning one image per frame. So you know how we have 30 frames per second, it's going to render out 30 images per second. And then you can use a tool like the ones I mentioned to kind of stitch it together into a video and then perform some editing, editing on it. So to keep things simple, I'm going to choose AVI here. And if you're on a Mac, there's going to be MOV at the bottom of this list here. These are both native video formats for each operating system. So you can choose either AVI or an image sequence depending on the pipeline you're using. Next, I'm going to choose the resolution that I want to render this video out at. So in my case, it's 1920 by 1080. You can choose whatever works for you over here. Next, you want to choose the destination. Where is this video going to go? In my case, it's going to my videos folder and inside a movies folder and it's being saved there. Once all of these settings have been configured, you want to then click on capture movie, which is then going to optionally ask you to save the project and then start rendering it out. So you'll see this kind of preview on the top left here and on the bottom right, it's going to say capturing video. Once this completes, this is going to give you a link to the folder where the video has been rendered. So let's just wait a second here and see what happens. So open capture folder. And you can see now I've got a tutorial.avi in here, which I double click and it's going to then load up and play our video. And congratulations, you've just rendered out a environment cinematic of an environment that you created yourself.